Okay. Hello, welcome to the Jones Library Design Subcommittee meeting for Thursday, May 19th, 2022. It's 1030 a.m. And we are having this obviously online Zoom. Um, so pursuit of chapter 20 of Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meetings calendar of the town of Amherst website um, or by dialing in on the phone. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. So I call this meeting to order. I'll just check that we can hear and see everybody. Um, I'm Christine Gray Mullen. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, George? Here. Right. Austin, uh, Austin is not here. Um, Sharon? I'm here. Austin, okay. Austin is here. Sorry to. Oh. So, oh, there you are. Hello. Good to see you, Austin. All right, Greg. And we have uh, Craig DiCarlo, our OPM. Yes. Um, and we also have Angela here helping us. Thank you. Um, okay, so we'll go to item two. We have minutes from May 13th. Um, they, I think, look great, but please, uh, can, um, can I have a motion or someone to approve these minutes? Uh, motion to approve the minutes as written. And second. Second, great. So are there any comments or changes, any concerns? Raise your hand or just yell out. <clears throat> I'm hearing nothing. So we'll take a vote. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a problem in my throat. <clears> throat> So uh, voting to approve the minutes of uh, May 13th, George? Yes. Uh, um, Austin? Yes. Sharon? Yes. And myself, Christine, four approved. Great. Um, so we'll go to item three, which is our Collier's project uh, update. Um, so I'll pass it on to Craig for whatever you have to guide us and help us with. Thank you, Christine. So I'd actually like to take things uh, a little out of order. Um, if we could address the benchmarking now, I think that'll be a quicker discussion. And then we can spend the bulk of our time on the uh, outreach public comments. That makes a lot of sense. Fantastic. All right. So with the, with the benchmarking, we've identified three locations. Um, Holyoke Public Library, Medford Public Library, and Woburn Public Library. Um, the results of the doodle poll is unfortunately not, there isn't one magic day where everyone can attend, um, but there are two days. Uh, if, we, if we split things up, uh, we can get sort of maximum attendance, and that's June 8th doing the Holyoke tour in the morning, and then June 10th uh, taking a good chunk of the day from sort of mid morning until evening to get out to. Medford and Woburn, and then get back to Amherst. So um, I have reached out to all three libraries. Holyoke is confirmed for June 8th. Um, Medford is confirmed for June 10th. And I'm awaiting a response from uh, the director of the Woburn Public Library. And um, I left a voicemail two days ago. And so I'll follow up again today, try to get in touch with them and uh, get us booked. And then we'll be good to go. Once we have those pinned down or confirmed. Um, I'll send around an email to everybody and then we can start talking logistics about things such as carpooling or whether a, um, a larger vehicle would be warranted to kind of bring everybody at once, um, which I think would be in line with the, uh, the town's um, sustainability aspirations and carbon mitigation aspirations to kind of minimize how many vehicles going back and forth. So that's the report I have for the benchmarking tours. Uh, George, is that a hand up? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to mention when we did site tours uh, several years ago now, uh, there's a local company that we use to rent a van uh, that gave us good rates. So if we do get to that route, uh, just check in with me and I can probably get you some pricing. And we may not have to, um, Paul, Paul Bachelman has said, um, 
he has reached out to his the town departments. There are vehicles in town that we could use. Great. Oops, sorry. Um. Christine, may I ask uh, a yes. question? Yes. So Craig, you, you provided a very convincing explanation of why you want to schlep us all to the eastern <laughs> part of the state. Uh, I have the virtue of remembering nothing, so I don't remember why. Um, and I'm wondering, like, what's wrong with West Springfield or what's wrong with Athol or what? I mean, there are libraries. I mean, every town in Western Massachusetts has renovated its library. So uh, just if, if you could just quickly, and if it's complicated, just ignore me. Remind me of why you think it's better to go to Woburn and Medford than West Springfield, Athol, Hadley, South Hadley. Certainly. Um, so the uh, we asked the M MBLC, our, our contact there, Andrea, which libraries uh, they recommended. And those were the two and that she recommended. And the reason uh, she gave was that um, um, Medford has similar uh, sustainability aspirations, or they're actually they've executed on those aspirations um, with a, I believe it's a net zero building, net zero energy use building, and so they can speak to that. They're also a large um, library, similar size to yep. um, the Jones Library, and then Woburn. Um, it has the benefit of being um, a historic building. It's actually a Richardsonian building. Um, paired up with a modern addition. So there's some similarities with your project. And uh, since I don't know that Woburn would warrant going out just for that, but kind of the two of them together being only about 15 minute drive from each other, you can kind of get two, two for one long, for the cost of one long drive. Okay, and Sharon, do you, you think that's, you, you concur in that? I can absolutely go either way. Uh, I do. I'm very. I am interested in the sustainability piece. Uh, I do. I agree with Austin. We could easily see historic, uh, historic renovations done out here. We're going to see it in Holyoke. So Holyoke is, yeah. is that building. And if we needed sustainability, again, I'm not. I'm happy to have people go or, to the eastern part of the state. But it just occurred to me as we were talking about this, if you want to see sustainability things, there are things in Amherst, Massachusetts, though they're not connected to libraries, uh, buildings that use cross laminated timber, buildings that are trying to be net, you know, you know net zero ready. But Zachary said so, it's late in the so, game for me to, to say that. So I, I, I'll just. The one thing that that these two libraries have that these Western mass libraries don't have uh, is the size. Um, I, you know, we are more comparable to Medford and Woburn, <laughs> Woburn. Um, uh, Woburn. So yeah, whatever. <laughs> so is that true of Springfield? Well, yeah, the East Forest Park branch is tiny. I mean, compared to us. Didn't West Springfield, Springfield do a big renovation? It, it was a complicated renovation and, and big for them. Okay. <clears throat> so how many people, Craig, um, can so far go to each? Um, that I don't have off the top of my head. I think there were somewhere around 10 that responded. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll get between... Line. We'll get between seven and nine people for each trip. Great. Great. Okay. All right. So we'll follow I may, up. On Christine, I may have requested this before. If I did, forgive me. I wonder if, as we're going through those libraries, if someone can kind of live stream it for people we who can't. Record or live stream, because there's two different complexities with that. One is we could video the tour and then you post it later, or you are saying live feed, like you're walking with a lot, yeah. I, I, I it, it, it's, it's a, that doesn't matter. What I was suggesting is that 
somebody could with their iPhone turn on something and everybody could see it or recording it. But for people who can't make it, Well, if you're talking about like FaceTime or something, I mean, then one of us, uh, are you volunteering? By the way, to do may I, just, I, don't think we should, I don't think we should talk about this. Craig, just arrange for some way to uh, allow people who can't be there to see what we see. Okay, Craig, Craig will work it out. He'll, he'll use his old Polaroid. I think I can figure something out. Okay. All right, we'll talk about this more because we don't want it to be too complicated. And yeah, it's just about cost. And I want to make sure that the people who are there are focusing on the job at hand and not worrying about multitasking and creating. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll weigh it out. That might be the hardest comment we have to deal with today. Okay. Um, so Craig, is that it for, and then we'll come back and follow up on another meeting on more details. Great, yes. thank you. Certainly. Do you want so to now the, uh, Yeah. Sorry, so now the, the next thing to talk about uh, is the, the outreach, the public outreach comments. Um, so as we know, there's a, there's a long um, list of them, which is great. Um, in the last meeting, I had recommended kind of sorting them into different buckets. And maybe the first thing we do is kind of define what those buckets are, like already in, yes we want maybe we want depending on the feasibility and um no we don't think it's appropriate or uh, attainable but um then perhaps we go through um the list sort of in in order or in groups and um talk about each and decide which ones we want and as as austin had pointed out last time um really the goal of this group is to hand things on to the library building committee to make the ultimate um, decision on how, you know, how to move forward. But um, this group kind of doing the, the legwork. So I, I'm going to propose that I share my screen and I have put all of the comments into three different buckets. I color coded them and I thought we could, I'd love to be able to get through all of the comments because we have a lot more comments that are coming. And so possibly at the next meeting, we could go through the next chunk and just keep doing it that way. If that works for you all. Christine, may I ask a question? Sure. So Craig had initially proposed that we focus on the things that need to be decided that are highlighted in yellow on Sharon's screen. Uh, Sharon has usefully gone through um, the whole nine yards of comments, including many that do not have to be decided uh, early on. So the question is, do you think it would be useful uh, at least initially to focus on the things that Craig had highlighted in yellow. Um, I was waiting to see Sharon's spreadsheet since it's the first time I've seen it, but um, if it is the entire table, I was only anticipating going through the highlighted ones today. And those are the only ones that I deeply studied and grouped myself and ranked. I, if, if the goal is to get through all the comments today, I personally think it will be enough of a challenge just to get through the uh, ones we need to do now in yellow. But um, Sharon, how do you feel about sorting your table by um, review date? Yeah, I'm cool to do the yellows. And so I thought I would start with my greens. And so these are the things that I think, let me back up. So there's this column here, column C. These are the things that are already in the plans. So I just kind of left those alone. I don't think we need uh, to tell, for example, uh, FAA to use native plants in the backyard. That's already going to happen. Um, so what I did was I have this column F I put into green. I feel like these are kind of new-ish ideas or things that may or may not be in the works with FAA. And, and so these are the items that I, I'm proposing that we send off to FAA. 
And then in yellow here, this column H, these were the things that um, I could go either way. I thought this committee should discuss them. And then column J, those are the items I, I personally just flat out said I disagree with for one reason or another. There's no, no need to for FAA to think about that. Um, so if we want to just do the yellows, that's totally fine by me under col in column D, it says review date. And I have, those are the, the bright yellow comments. Um, and I, I'd, so I'd like to start with the greens, if at all possible, and then we'll move on to the others and talk about them. So the first one is comment number 24. Can I, can I just interrupt here for end goal, what we're actually, so, I would like to update this spreadsheet um, and then get get everything in this column F, whatever it is that we agree to, put it in this column and that will go to the building committee for their next meeting. So what I'm so so for comment number 24, for example, that is something that FAA wants to hear about now. It, it has to do with the Burnett Galleries uh, after our access. Um, and I put it in the, the list of things that I think we should say, send it on to JLBC uh, because this committee believes that that should be a priority. So then I would ask you, do any of other other committee members, disagree with me. Do you think that's a really bad idea? In which case I'll move it out of that column altogether. So I thought if we could just whip through, that's what I'm hoping to do because there are so many comments. Right, so, um, but let's just say we end up, and this can happen either in this group or when we send it to the committee at large and Austin, I'd like your um, thought on this idea. You know, we're, we're, we're doing due diligence here and we are looking and thinking all of us about each and every comment. And some of the comments are just onesies, others can get grouped together and they're like a larger idea. And some of these comments, like when um, Austin brought up the one last week on the Burnett Gallery that said like, um, you know, it had like easy, high visibility, easy to find prominent location where it had multiple things. And what we sort of came out of just looking at that one comment was, are we just gonna end up with a shorter list of suggestions that we got from looking at the comments and not necessarily just delivering forth each comment? Because sometimes the comments have like 10, uh, uh, you know, on a, one occasion, there's 10 people who are like, yeah, I like this one. And then, like I said, most of them are just onesies. Um, I'm just looking at uh, thinking of other committees and stuff I've been on how, you know, like we're supposed to consider these comments, but we want them to, we're trying to extract bigger ideas that we are then passing on to the designers and saying, hey, can you consider this concept? and not necessarily give them like uh, one comment that's like ESL needs a living room. You know, like maybe we're saying, you know, something more general about ESL to the designers from the comments we received, you know, we, yeah. Does, does that make any sense? Like, are we just still passing all these comments forward to the designer and Craig, maybe you can weigh in or are we trying to like, glean ideas for design that we want to pass on to the designer or a combination of both? I think it could be a combination of both. So we could do this what Sharon's saying and sort of like tighten up the spreadsheet and then from that spreadsheet come up with more concise comments and suggestions that we put to say our the larger committee and then give that to the designer rather than all the little bits. And give them the spreadsheet. Kristen, I, I see Austin's got his hand like up. Like, how does the design? How we're giving? How do the designers know that some that like we're pouring these comments forward? Like these, some of them are just like their thoughts. Like consider Christine, this, and then others are directives. Christine, yeah. I, I I think you're raising a very good question. Sharon has given us the way to do this. What we should do is we should go through the um, the 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 list 
Sharon has highlighted some things. Others may disagree about the things that she's highlighted. Uh, and myself, I was not moved by the number uh, of the, you know, there was one or 10 people. I was moved by the idea. I thought, oh, gee, that's a good idea or that's a bad idea. Um, and my thought was what we will do is end up passing these things to the, uh, the ones that we want to will pass to FAA. FAA themselves will look at them, come back and say, you know, we can't do this or it's too specific. But I think what Sharon has offered us is a really a good way to proceed. We should go through this list, um, identify the ones that we want to have in green. Now, so it come from the whole committee, or if there's a split, we'll have a split. And then forward on this, um, this spreadsheet with our recommendations, because others on the, on the building committee will have their own views, may or may not agree with us. Exactly. So where... So is the building committee it, 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 the, the building committee is going to do it building committee they is going bring to do up it. other comments to add to it is that what you're saying Christine the building yeah. committee is going to do exactly what we are doing now they're going to be guided by our recommendations so the thing to do i think is go through the spreadsheet go to the things in yellow which do we want to recommend that the building committee forward to the architects? Then Sharon will revise the spreadsheet so that whatever the, that column now is in green will be the ones that the, the design committee is recommending. And then the JLBC will have the same conversation that we are having, except they'll have our recommendations. The result of that will be another version of the spreadsheet with the green being the things that the J, J, the building committee are now conveying to the uh, to the to the architects. And today, do we also go through the maybes? My, well, for the my ones that are highlighted in yellow. Yellow. Just, every every. Right. Right. I'm only I'm, talking about the ones in yellow. Right. We, we we look at each one of the ones in yellow because what, what all we've got so far is Sharon's view. Others of us might think differently. Oh, absolutely. And when we all come to a consensus in this group and we have a list of green and maybe some yellows, but hopefully they're either green or red. So then we, as a recommendation, pass that to the larger group. And what do we expect the larger group to, to just go through the greens? No, we expect the larger group to re, to do exactly what we are doing. It's just a subcommittee recommending to the larger committee, but the larger committee, someone on the larger committee may look at one of Sharon's um, reds or one of her vanillas and think, gee, that should be a green. And then they'll persuade everybody and it'll move from the red to the green. So okay. I promise, Christine, this this will this looks huge, <laughs> but it's not. So I just let me, we're going to take it one at a time. So first off, we're we're all looking at comment number twenty four, which is Burnett Gallery public after hours access. I agree that that should move on uh, to FAA first to the building committee and then to FAA. This is something that Craig has flagged for us to discuss today, and so I have said yes. I made it green. And so now I would ask you if any of you disagree with that, now is the time. Austin. So um, I don't know whether I disagree with it. How much foot traffic does the Burnett Gallery get? Uh, so I, I, just, I just don't have enough information yet to know how important it is to have after hours access and what that implies in the way of staffing in the library. Sure. Uh, well, so so in theory, after hours access would not affect staffing because we will uh, at some we'll be having you know swipey cards. It won't be regular keys, and they can be reprogrammed. So we give somebody a card and say, "Okay, lock up when you're done." Um, uh, as far as traffic goes, pre-COVID. Uh, 
the gallery attracted a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people would only come to the library just for the receptions, just to see the artist displays. Um, we don't have actual figures. We don't have patron counters right now just in the gallery. So I can't give you exact numbers. We're good, thank you. That's very helpful. Okay. Sharon, just wondering, are you skipping over um, the one above it? So, because I left that alone, because I agree, um, the Burnett Gallery is going to be in a high visibility space. It's going to be in a prominent location. It's not something that we need to waste time talking with FAA about it. It's already already in the works. It's going to happen. Thank you. I just wanted you to explain that column. So sure. That I, I Thanks. Uh, so. If you guys agree with that, I'm gonna change this to yellow just so that I know we all have agreed. And now moving on, so I'm wait, looking- so you're skipping a bunch of yellow ones. So I just wanna explain to- Again, it's the same thing watch. because those are in the already in the works column. Yep. Um, now they yeah. No, Sharon, you skipped some that have yeah. red there so but i'm uh, starting with the green and then i will go to the yellow okay. and then i will go to the red fabulous uh so the next one is comment number 42 gender neutral restroom and after hour and community spaces i agree with that is there anyone on the committee who disagrees with that fabulous Next one is comment 45, uh, teen young adult area for meeting socialization for those with a variety of disabilities and sensory issues. I agree with that. Does, do any of you disagree? Next comment, number Sharon, 60. I'm sorry, I was, I was uh, slow to unmute. Could you just, uh, area for meetings, I just didn't ha have a sense of what that, I mean, it sounds right, but I didn't have a sense of what it, what it means in terms of the design of the teen room. Yeah, I, so I had the same question. For a handful of these, some of it ha has a little interpreting to do. So, you know, the teens will already, they will have their meeting spaces. They'll be able to socialize in the entire teen room. What I felt like was key in, in this comment was th th the variety of disabilities and sensory issues. So, so, so I feel like this is a, a place to have a conversation with the architects to find out what exactly that means. How would they furnish that space? So that's why I agreed. Uh, comment 62, gender neutral bathrooms with changing tables. I agreed. Do you all? No disagreements. Awesome. Uh, comment number 68, having both quiet and active spaces in the children's room. So I agreed with this thinking, again, here is another conversation piece. If the computers, and I, I don't have I don't have access to the designs right now, but um, in the children's room, you'll remember it's all along the north, south, east, uh, the western part of the building, and part of the children's room is in the old building, and part of it is in the new building. And I think that a nice quiet space could be in the front of that building. So that's why I, my comment was, um, where did it go? If the computers will be located in the front room and, and that's where all the woodwork is, that could be a quiet-ish place. So that's what my comment meant. And if none of you agree, I'm yellowing it. Um, down here, comment number 103, placement of bookshelves that create groups of seating. Um, I almost put this already in the works column because um, I think it's going to happen no matter what. But I just felt, you know, just to be safe, I'm, I'm going to hit agree. Put it in the green. And I'm not hearing that any of you disagree. So again, I'm passing by all of these yellows because all of those yellows are already, these are items that are already in the works. Uh, comment number 208, a gaming space in the teen room. So the teen room is going to have a teen maker space. 
I am also hoping that there will be a, a, a television somewhere in there, a large screen TV to do whatever it is uh, that is that teens want to do during that time period, you know, so right now they can play games right now. They can do virtual reality. I don't know what will happen in 10, 20 years. What, what teenagers will think is cool. So that's why I'm hoping the technology will be there. And again, this is another, another item for discussion with the architects. That's why I made that green. If anybody hates that idea, let me know. Okay. Comment 215, gender neutral bathroom in the teen room. I don't think there is a bathroom in the teen room, but um, I wanted to flag it because I think this is important. I, I think we're still not sure if all the bathrooms will be gender neutral, which is something that I'm advocating for, but for teens, I feel like this is especially important. Um, so that's why I flagged it as being green. I um, I just want to add to that one that, I don't know, I kind of think that one's already done if you loop it into the gender inclusivity, because there's another comment somewhere in there about like seniors, senior area and being near bathrooms. I think in general, the plant bathrooms tend to be lumped together because they need to be connected to infrastructure. And there's already uh, regulations for how many bathrooms and how many on each floor and, and accessibility. And I'd rather just keep that comment lumped in with the gender inclusivity. I'm with you. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, comment number 221, low sensory break nooks in the teen space. Again, this kind of goes back to Austin's question. I don't necessarily know what this means, um, but I wanted to open it up for conversation with FAA, which is why I agreed with it. Uh, comment number 226. I thought this was interest. This was a very interesting uh, comment. So waiting to exhale, people are looking for spaces to become at one with themselves, uh, which I love. So the room with couches, uh-uh. Um, so couches, unfortunately, not only are they very expensive, but only one person sits on them. Uh, you, you're, people just don't sit next to strangers. And so what happens is not only is only one person sitting in it, it also invites people to lie down and sleep. And so what libraries do is um, you, you would offer a love seat in a children's area, because that makes sense. You want families to be reading to eat each other. That's awesome. But in the adult spaces, I would say no. That being said, soft lights and a meditative kind of atmosphere in the quiet study rooms. Again, I thought that was a space for a discussion with FAA. Okay. I don't know what it means. Um, and I'm open to the discussion. I, I, again, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. Like you have a dim corner somewhere. I mean, um, so it's hard for me to think Yes, we ought to discuss this with the FAA. Um, uh, I don't. I don't meditate. Maybe somebody else does. I don't know what you need in order to meditate. My friends who do meditate, they seem to be able to do it on a bus, a train, and most of my students seem to be in some meditative state during most of my classes. So I don't know about the. I just didn't know what it meant. Christine. And just again, security, dim corners, you know, yeah. we want line of sight. Some people are meditating, some people may, yeah. Um, and the other part is, is that singular meditation or group meditation? Like I would hope that some of the meeting rooms where a meditation class or group could meet and it has the dimmable lights, this is more like an infrastructure thing, you know, so that you can control the lighting maybe speakers in the room for, um, you know, having background music. 
So, yeah, uh, I agree with everything you all just said. Uh, you are uh, you are right. For safety purposes, we don't want any dark spaces. That's not what I'm looking for. And I'm not looking for yoga mats to be placed in some space. I'm, I, I just didn't know if there could be something done with interior design where it would be a place for people to go who uh, just wanted that meditative feeling. Okay, uh, comment 235, gender neutral bathrooms. I think we said we agreed to that. And, and that's it for my green column. I thought now I'll go over to my maybe column, things that I just wasn't sure about. Uh, comment number 28, which is natural lighting in the Burnett Gallery. I, I, I know lighting is important in an art gallery. I have no idea. I don't think it's good to have a lot of natural light because uh, it's not good for the art. So th that's why I said maybe. I agree with your thought, but it's not it, it, right. Experts need to weigh in a little bit on this because light is nice, but I would think with art, you want to be controlled light and not damaging light. Yeah. So I'm going to highlight that in bright yellow. My other maybes, this one here, comment number 124, build, I just didn't know what this meant, build and expand on the beautiful front with larger spaces. We're not expanding the front, we're not allowed to do anything, I, I just don't know what this means, do any of you? Again, when we get these one comments and it's not a discussion, it's hard to understand what was going, you know, their idea necessarily. And I think what we have to remember is we are addressing and care about each person's thoughts, but how many, was that a one person comment or did people like it? Yeah. What? Because there's what, one. There's more than one. No, just one. Just one. So that's where we were more looking at all these comments. Hopefully, if that person had an, other people were thinking it, we got it in other comments. And this one, kind of like when you say it's already done, like you just said, we're not expanding off the front and the inside's going to be greatly changed. So I don't so, know if this comment is worth sending to FAA. Craig, do you know what it means? I don't know for sure, but, um, you know, build and expand. We're right now, we're in a uh, an addition and construction mindset, uh, but that phrase could also mean um, to do more of. So perhaps this person likes the existing front area, okay, but and wants more of it, larger spaces that are of that feel. So perhaps that's what they're getting at. So maybe if I just do, uh, I'll just say that it's happening. Yeah, and, and I, I just want to remind anyone who's ever watching this video later, or, you know, if it's reported or anything, that if someone does have an idea off this comment, you know, put another comment in. Again, we're still collecting comments. You can put them in at the library. There's various ways you can give feedback. Um, and then we'll reevaluate it again down the road when we do this. Thank you. Uh, next comment, number 147, audio video recording rooms. So there will be a teen maker space. What's in it is kind of yet to be determined. So that's why I left it there. Again, a lot of it is electrical infrastructure. When the designers are thinking about that, it's about expanding and having the conduit there and enough plugs and you know, because for a lot of this tech stuff, that's really, if you have the space, like a maker space or a room, lots of things can happen in that room if you have the electricity and the speakers and such. Yeah, it'll be there. Um, but I, f I don't know, I feel like if, so the room is only going to be so big, and whether it's an AV room or a maker space or something else, it can only do so much and right okay i may be also need specialty equipment for that kind of thing and that yeah. might be a down the road grant thing where maybe a study room gets converted you know sure 
that kind of thing. Um, Sharon, I'd like to say no to this one. Okay. Um, I, again, it, audio recording means quiet. <laughs> so, uh, I, and I didn't see this one as linked to the teen room, but uh, here's, my, here's, here's my thought. The library is gonna be great. We're gonna do many, 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 many things. But for you to make an audio recording, uh, like I wanna make a record, I wanna sing. I don't know that we wanna say, come to the library to do that. Now, I don't feel strongly about it, but it, it just did strike me as um, not, or not, I wouldn't put this at the top of my list of priorities. And I'm glad you said that because I agree. <laughs> you, you just gave me the catalyst to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's not there. No, no. That is all of it. Okay. So what we have left are the reds here. I disagreed with comment number 25, which is locating the Burnett Gallery and the special collections exhibits in, you know, in the front 1928, where, where my office is, for example. And I disagreed with that because right now the automated materials handling system is slated to go here. Comment number 52, having a black history center or space. So, so I disagreed with this only because I, I don't uh, disagree with it. Um, there, I'm disagreeing with having a separate room that is just for black history. Uh, it would, what I'm recommending is that uh, the black history in, of Amherst and the Valley would be, there would be a, a collection in special collections. So, but not a separate room for it. So that's why I, I disagreed with it. Does that make sense to you all? Uh, I think you should move it on the basis of what you've said, uh, put it somewhere else. Don't have a disagree. Okay. Uh, put it somewhere else and attach the comment that you just, um, that you just um, made, namely put it in your agree, if you agree, but say should be in special collections. So move it over a little bit, right? Yeah, it, it, it will just be located in special collections. And that's not to say that it may not have its own small space in special Diesel. collections. Diesel. Okay, thank you. Comment number 57. Uh, I, so I guess this is the same thing. It's not that I'm disagreeing with it. I'm saying it won't be a separate room. It will be a space. So I'll move this over. What does it mean? Uh, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I don't know what that means. So I don't know if this has to do with the, the teen BIPOC center uh, that some folks want in town. Um, again, there will be a collection just like there is now in the children's room, but there won't be a separate room for it. I think that you might want to put it in the maybe and have a, just a question mark about we're not we're not exactly clear what it what it what it means. OK. Thank I agree you. with that. Because the library is like you just said this. So Sharon, Dewey Decimal, so those books or topics tend to be in one area in the children's right or actual materials that we're talking about if they're talking about education i'm not sure that's not usually part of your programming it it, it depends if they're talking about a collection which yes if they're talking yeah. about a separate room an actual social justice center that's different thank you uh, comment number 65 is, oh, a loft in the children's room. So I got to say, I love the idea, but I don't love the idea of children falling from the sky. So that's for safety reasons. I put that here. I was there a teen loft suggestion? Yeah, I put okay. that in the disagree too, as much as I love the idea, I, you know. Right. I agree. 
Uh, comment number 78 is a cafe, coffee bar, water bar. Uh, so I love this idea, but, but um, no, the library will not be going into business. We're not going to be providing the refreshments, but in that cafe space, people will be able to bring their own. I just, um, I don't know, maybe it can go on the maybe, I, meaning I would like the infrastructure of the building to be able to be expandable in the future or even used for events or whatever. So looking at I'm the FAA thing. Yeah. Totally open to the infrastructure and let some other librarian down the road there and set of trustees decide to do that. I think that's great. Comment 85 is oh a living Karen, room for Karen, yes, sorry. Sorry, you yes. Change what you wrote about the coffee bar. So right. you need to make clear it, you gotta just change it. Yeah, like infrastructure. It'll confuse people if they <laughs> oh sorry. Don't. Yes. Good point, Austin. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, back to comment 85, a living room with ESL. So there's not going to be a living room, but there will be a nice reception area so that people, you know, they often get here early before their meeting. And so here's a chance for people to just have informal conversations. I'm sorry, where are you right now? Which one? Uh, comment 85. Okay, thank you. Sure. 85. Yeah. No, uh, there's not a thing. I think so. Comment 92. Uh, so I, I love the idea of, of somebody advocating for a larger office for the ESL director. The <laughs> only reason I disagreed here was because all of the all of the offices will be the same size, give or take, depending on where they're located. Even yours? Kidding. Mine is a little bit, a little Kidding. bigger, um, but it's in the, it's in the program. Well earned, well earned. Okay, comment number one, 104 in art space. So uh, uh, I, there was a little interpreting that I did here. I think what this person meant was a place for people to do art, whether it's adult, teens, or kids. And so I just put this general comment. There is not going to be one space for adults to just come in and 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 have art supplies made available. Instead, it will be a part of programming. So we already often do, we'll do calligraphy classes, we'll do wool felting, we'll do knitting, things like that. So, that, so that's more about the programming, not necessarily about the space. Um, the only space where there will be a space set up specifically for art is in the children's room, the children's activities room. So that's why I put it in the no column. So I noticed there was a lot of, not a lot, but a few different comments on art space. There was like teen art space, children's right. art space, everybody art space. So just to clarify, there's, it's mostly in programming. Most of the art doing is children teens do they would they then use the children's no they'll have their own maker space but again it, it it will be a part of programming it's not going to be a separate room so, so that's why i'm saying that's why i disagreed with it and that's a teen maker space so if there was a program event for adults to do some kind of art where would that be held they would do that in either the amherst room or the woodbury room great Uh, same thing with comment number 106. There's not going to be a separate conference room or meeting space for teens. Um, uh, teenagers absolutely are allowed to reserve our meeting rooms, uh, just like any, just like any other patron, but there's not going to be a separate teen meeting room. So Sharon, I'm now getting a little confused about okay. what you're doing with the color. So yellow was meant to indicate we all agree. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
So you've now got a yellow in the disagree column. So that'll be for me. I'll go back and clean it up later. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. I just want to know which things we we agreed great. on. Thanks. Uh, comment number 108, uh, bank of room with Zoom setups for people to use as needed. So again, I, I, I put no, but it's kind of a yes. Uh, we will have quiet study rooms. And now that I'm speaking out loud, maybe I should put that in the already in the works column. Yeah. So uh, again, I don't know what is being referenced um, and why it's linked to quiet study rooms. Uh, if you, if you, uh, in fact, I think it's not quiet study rooms if you're on Zoom and you're talking. Well, so there are going to be rooms and people can do, they can either study or they can be on Zoom. They're, okay, they'll... But in other words, the designation quote, quiet study rooms. So, uh, so I'm glad you brought this up. So, um, what the Jones Library staff had been advocating for was actually not closed in rooms because then you have to manage them. You have to reserve, you need scheduling and, and all of that. But the MBLC is strongly recommending that they actually be rooms that have to man be managed. So, so if they are rooms, you can do whatever you want in them, whether it's Zoom or quiet study or whatever. Okay. I do um, work on the Chicopee Library, and they have them. They have a newer building, um, and they have a, a lot of glass in the door. But yeah. like Sharon said, it does mean they're scheduled, um, but they're totally enclosed, yet still have good Wi-Fi. I think that's, again, it's having the infrastructure in these rooms so that you have an adequate Wi-Fi connection so they can Zoom. Yeah. So that's what I would want FAA to make sure that the infrastructure is there. Excellent. Comment number 147 is audio video recording rooms. Again, I think we all agreed to, dis to, to not have those. Comment number 158, don't make Amity Street front entrance accessible. I This was like the one comment that I disagreed with wholeheartedly. Everybody should be able to come through the front door. Is, wouldn't that, and maybe Craig can answer, isn't that something we would have to do and you'd have to ask for a variance and like make an effort to not make it or is it grandfathered in? Um, because of the extent of the renovation and addition, the full building must be accessible or must follow the accessibility guidelines, which doesn't mean every single square inch needs to be accessible by somebody, um, a particular individual, but yeah, we have to follow the guidelines for the whole building. But what does that mean with respect to our front door? So, um, See, As a, the thing that I believe is driving this comment, though I don't know, is the notion that the front door has historic value as it is, and that if you one makes it quote accessible, we're going to, I don't know, diminish or detract from the historic value of that front entrance. So if there is a requirement that the front entrance be accessible as opposed to an entrance be accessible. That needs to be said. My own view is that the front entrance to the building should be accessible, as we said in Providence, irregardless of what is required, because we want to signal to people, this is your place. Uh, you don't have to go in the back entrance. So maybe diving into that comment a little bit, if the fear was to make it accessible, that you'll have some like modern accessible door. But Craig, I, I know it. It's all costs a little extra, but you know, could it be that it's accessible, but you're asking for a more historical looking setup or door? You know what I'm saying, rather than a standard modern door. So I'm not familiar enough with um, the setup as it currently is. Um, sometimes, 
So in, in the, I, I do know that the accessibility guidelines are very specific. So is there a, just a question, is there a step to get up into the front door? Yes. Yeah. All yeah. right. So then that would render it, it it's non-conforming to the accessibility guidelines. So maybe a ramp or something. So, and a ramp has a different look. And also if, it, if the ramp is a, goes up to a certain height and now it means the guardrail. So it, does, it could have a visual impact. Guided by, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I hope this building will be guided by principles of universal design and that we not imagine that accessibility means a ramp in the usual understanding of what that is. And principles of universal design mean that we want to design the building so that it works for everybody, not retrofit it so that, you know, well, okay, we've got, we've got to have ramps. I think the issue with respect to the doorway has more to do with than with the door. It has to do with what surrounds the door. And I assume to make it accessible, you have to widen that entrance beyond what the door is right now, but I don't know. In any case, I do think we should say we support this and pass it on to the larger committee and let's see what people say. Thank you. Comment number 180, that's the loft in the teen room. Again, yep. I don't want teenagers falling from the sky. Number, uh, comment number 195, we've discussed this already. There will not be a separate room for teens to do art. Uh, that's a part of programming. Comment 198, I, I, I didn't, understand this comment uh so separated from the rest of the library the teen room will be a different teen room it's not going to be detached if that's what they were talking about they're not going to have their own entrance so so that's why i put it in the disagree column unless you guys have different interpretations of what that meant well, and again, separate, you still, they have to have the same rules of line of sight and for the librarians to know what's going on. And it... my guess is that this comment or my reading into this comment is that they want the teen room to feel somehow unique or different. So it's not just uh, here's a space that looks like the rest of the library. Maybe it looks a little different. Maybe it feels a little different. I don't know. There's not a whole lot of detail in that comment, so it's hard to hard to know what it really means. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. But they will have their own area, which again, taking these comments, a lot of them are coming out of what is presently existing, mm -hmm. and the teens have been kind of shuffled about. You know, they're half upstairs, downstairs. And in that atrium, well, whose space is that? So, okay. As I keep going, that one. Uh, number comment number two twenty four. At yeah. least one dark womb like corner. Again, <laughs> I. Yeah. No. Uh, I want one of those in my house. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, comment number 244, the size of the building should be trimmed down. We're not allowed to do that. And comment number 246, helping seniors with computer literacy, computer tutoring center. Uh, so again, maybe this should be moved over to the already in the works because yeah. that's, it's a part of programming. It's not that I disagree with it. Uh, and there will be a computer room, like computers. There will be computers everywhere and there will be classes, yeah. Okay, so that's it. I have so, a request, Christine may make a request. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, first of all, Sharon, thank you for, for, um, for doing this. Uh, others of us may have other things that we want to point out, but I wonder, uh, like Christine, I'm a little worried about the way in which this gets presented to the building committee. Uh, uh, Sharon, could you stop screen sharing for one yeah, second? Yeah, definitely. Uh, stop. And I'm wondering if you could do a separate spreadsheet containing only the yeah. items that Craig highlighted in yellow. Yeah. 
and send two things to the committee. One, that thing with the idea that's what we're going to concentrate on first, and then the whole spreadsheet the way it is right now. Yes, I, I love that idea. Yeah, I agree. Our work here is done for now. Um, well, I just want to, again, because you have deep dive, thank you. That was great work. And if you could pull up your the spreadsheet one more time, because this is for the public. I just want to assure them that that column that where you agree, you know, because we only address certain comments and there's way over a hundred of them. Um, like if you go to the first agreed, already incorporated, I should say, yellow. If you could just read the first couple so that like people understand like. Uh, okay, so the native plants, preserving those, the, tr yeah, preserving the, the trees. Yeah, the ones that Craig, that Craig went, like go down to the burnet. Oh, the ones that are yellow. Yeah, just uh, the ones that are yellow because we'll deal with the other ones later. High visibility burnet art gallery, uh, physically accessible uh, accessible burnet gallery, yep. uh, dedicated space for the gallery, uh, accessible restroom on the main floor, uh, should not look like a school, open space in the children's room. So these are, uh, again, these are all comments. These things are already in the works. Um, so I believe column C is a column that doesn't need to be forwarded to FAA because it's already happening. Exactly. But it is accessible to the public and they can see this spreadsheet so they can feel like, well, what happened to my comment? So if they you look if the public looks it up and they see their comment and it, it's under that column, it means it's it's already in some form. Thank you very much, but it's in the works and being incorporated. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I mean that's part of our process here, that people don't feel like their comments just go into the yep. into the bucket and never to be looked at. So thank you. Um, Austin, I completely agree with what you were saying. So that will come to us for the next meeting, which is May 24th, next Tuesday. So uh, Christine, I think yeah. we wanna be clear, Craig can help us be clear with this. We wanna be clear about our process with respect to these comments going forward. Yes. So there are a lot of comments that we haven't discussed this morning. Uh, how do we imagine that we, how and when do we imagine we're gonna discuss those comments as well as others as they are coming in? So my recommendation would be to have this as a, a recurring part of this design subcommittee meeting. Um, and then over the course of, so we know that, you know, comments are going to continue rolling in. Um, so maybe um, not necessarily the next meeting, but the following meeting, open the list up again and, and take a look at maybe sort of a, t a second tier of timeliness. So like these ones are the ones that we looked at today were the ones that need, that will, in, uh, the design team is thinking about those items right now. And so I, I can do a similar thing and identify things that I think they're gonna be thinking about in a couple of months. And so then we can tackle those. And then I can do like a, a third color for things that I think they'll be thinking about, you know, uh, half a year from now. And those will be like the furniture and, you know, um, things like that paint colors. So, and then, and so then over the course of the next couple of months, um, sort of tackle, tackle everything. And then as ones keep coming in, we can maybe have a line on our agenda, look at new items, or new comments. Yeah. So I'll work with Craig. He'll come up with the next, right. the next set that we should be, uh, evaluating in time for the next, uh, meeting. Fabulous. Thank you, Craig. And then I would think shortly thereafter, if we could just do the rest of this batch, because how I look at it is this batch was captured on May 11th, and there'll be more outreach events coming up and, of course, ongoing efforts to collect comments. Um, so you made this so easy, Sharon. Um, I think it's great if we sort of keep rolling and try to get through this batch. Yeah. Even if 
the comments don't really affect for a year, you know, like landscaping, I think we could still organize them and go through them and then even set them aside for when they're needed. I'm sure FAA would love to, you know, have our answers sooner rather than later yeah. for all of them. That's true, because they're looking at the holistic, the whole thing. You're right. Yeah. They've got a vision they're trying to create and yeah. consistency in the whole design. So, okay. All right. So, Craig, should do you think we can do this for the next meeting? Like, well, this was a special. So we have one. Well, we were going to, yeah, we have one next on the 27th because FAA is coming back and they've got some stuff to show us. Maybe not that one we could do two weeks after that in June and we could have another one of these just for comments or sure, certainly and I can even aim to have the you know the prioritizing is pretty quick you know it only, it only took yeah. 20 minutes to go through the whole thing um so I can do that you know for next week all right yeah we don't have to tackle them all next week but then you at least have my recommendation on the timing so we have the meeting on the 27th and then we have one um, on June 10th, which we're already got another event, right? And then um, there's June 24th. On the 27th, meaning next week, I don't know how much FAA was bringing to us. So I don't wanna overload the meeting is what I'm sort of pushing. Do you think we can do both or should that meeting be mostly about them? Uh, I. I agree with what you just said i think that meeting should be mostly about them uh sort of like what what they've got to show us and sort of have a discussion about it um and then perhaps in the second meeting from now sort of tackle another batch of these sort of the, the next level of priority so maybe we could schedule a separate meeting you know not wait until two weeks after the 27th it would be the 24th of june because we won't do june 10th because we have a field trip gotcha so maybe we should just schedule another could we do another one of these thursday meetings yeah like um, the week of may 30th the week of may 30th so you're talking about june 2nd yeah could how does uh the rest of y'all look for june 2nd 10 30 and we can slide it i mean um i will be on vacation but i don't want to hold up the process um, are you on vacation that whole week? Yeah. Um, we could go yes. to, cause we could do the 9th, June 9th. Yes. As long as I don't get stuck in another state, I should be here. <laughs> it's my first day back. That's <laughs> And I, yeah, I have, I have training from nine to three that day. So then the next, unless we switch off a Thursday and go to a different day, we could do the 16th of June, which I know sounds far off, but it really isn't. And how about we do, how about, George, when do you go on vacation? Uh, right after Memorial Day. So, Christine, could we think about meeting, for example, um, either that Thursday, the 26th, uh, it have to be after 1030 because I have a commitment, but either that or the following day, which is a Friday. You're talking about May. May 27th, May 26th or May 27th? That's what I'm proposing. Well, the 27th, we already have a meeting, so that's when FAA is coming. Okay, well then let's see what so we could do the day before if I don't know. I mean is how, you know, how about is, how about a kind of a double or back to back meeting on the twenty seventh where we give FAA their you know the full hour and then you know so then we tackle a, a batch after them because I don't think they need to I don't think we'd even want them necessarily no. sending through this process. And what I'm okay with that on the twenty seventh. If people are okay with potentially a two hour meeting. I'm, what I'm, time is the meeting on the 27th? 930. Yeah. No, nine, isn't it? Nine, sorry. Okay, no, good. No. Nine, yep. We could okay. make it go to 11 instead of 10. I can't do that. Okay. So, I mean, Craig, there's not an emergency rush to get this, the rest of them done next week. Correct. 
So, and you said you. I'm still. What about June sixteenth? I know it seems really far away, but sadly, it's not. That works for me. What time? Because we're we can. Flex so what on do that. we say when someone on the building committee says we should be looking at these all of these um, comments together for the point that you just made about well, FAA wants to have the total vision. Uh, are we going to say well, we will, but it'll be in three weeks well we're still in through this schematic design we're still collecting comments and i i don't i'm not privy to what is going on in outreach but i know they're scheduling a bunch more events to collect more comments so they are going to continue to come in in batches through what do we think craig like july first of july um, and so even then, even then, I think the intent is to leave that um, door open and allow for more comments true. to continue to come in. But it's just that if a comment happens to be about the layout, you know, that ship will have sailed at that point. But if mm -hmm. the comment is about a, a finish material or, uh, you know, something about the interior look and feel, then that's something that can certainly be incorporated, you know, a couple months from now. Right. And some of these, like landscaping, we may look at the comments now, but we could be re-looking at comments two years from now. So Christine, I have to get off in four minutes. What yeah. is your what is your thought about I'm thinking this? June 16th? Was it 1030 again or do we need to slide that? How does that work for people? Could we do it earlier than 1030? How does nine work for everyone? Anyone have a problem with nine o'clock on 16th? I do have a conflict at nine, but okay. So when, when are you free? When are you free? From nine to ten is my meeting, and so then I'm free at, at, at as early as ten. How's ten o'clock on the sixteenth? Great. I'm looking at nodding heads. Okay, Angela, the final answer: sixteenth, ten, and we'll do phase two of these. This capture of the right. May eleventh comments. Right. Great. Okay, um, just quick, and I know you've got to go, Austin, sure. but um, there, uh, we'll talk next meeting about, I was included with UMass projects through Alex Lefebvre and the Outreach Committee about two, um, Community Click, and the other one is Small Town, and I'll talk about those and how they might be utilizing them through us, so um, right. it's sort of a technical thing, and I'll add that to the next agenda. Um, anything else, anyone? I shout out now. Okay, so we will, uh, no comments from the chair. So we can adjourn. Oh, public comment. Sorry, most important part. Uh, we only have two people right now. If you raise your hands, if you have a comment that you want to say, please. And I'll give it a moment here. I see the two people. not seeing any hand up. So at this point, uh, we'll adjourn this meeting. Uh, thank you very much. And I will see you all next Tuesday and then again next Friday. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, this was great. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you all, bye-bye. Thank you, Angela. Oh, I still see we're still recording. I just wanna...